Okay, in this video, we're going to apply everything I've taught you this semester to analyzing this circuit, especially some of the more recent stuff, but we'll also incorporate Thevenin analysis because you're going to see how Thevenin makes this circuit easier to analyze. So first off, I'm going to back up a little bit because I suppose to be technically correct, I need to add something to this last equation for V of C just to make it formal. And that is we're going to put here a U of t because right all, all our the time that we're calculating everything that we're interested in is right here so we need a u of t for all of it so that's a minor detail that prevents us from having something that goes off to negative infinity here or positive infinity here so that's what that's for let's go back to this circuit and let's uh, finish it out. So the idea here, uh, and let me add this C here, okay, is that, you know, this the switch goes from position one to position two at time zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to find the initial condition, initial state. How we're going to do it is we're going to reduce this to a Thevenin equivalent. So let's draw the circuit and let's put here initial condition. Simplifying the circuit, And I drew the capacitor in here in blue to indicate it's the load. So the black part of the circuit we will reduce to a Thevenin equivalent. And I've labeled these nodes A and B also. So let's go about finding the Thevenin resistance and the Thevenin voltage. For the Thevenin voltage, we'll have this circuit. And I can do a source transformation. And we want to be careful about recognizing that this is node A here, and this is node A uh, here, and node B, and node B. So those are on either side of R2. But now it's easy to find the V Thevenin, right? So we'll put here V Thevenin is VAB. Take a moment, pause the video, and ask yourself, how do you find VAB from this circuit? and then unpause the video when you're done thinking about it. If you thought about it and you recognize that voltage divider would be a nice way to go, you're correct. We'll put here it should be 15 milliamps because I put in a bad units here. Let's make this 60 microfarads. Okay, that's better. I was wondering why my, my numbers are strange. When I use the numbers that I gave you here, I got that. And we could find R Thevenin. It turns out it doesn't really matter a whole lot in this case, but let's do it anyway. We turn that current source down to zero, so we make it an open circuit. And now we think about injecting current here at A, and then this highlights for us that there's no current going this way. Current has to go around, and it can split off here at A. So what we've got is R1 and R3 in series, because current can take this path, and that path is in parallel with R2. And for this, I get R Thevenin, and I'll put it one for position one of the switch, I'm getting 2.36 kilo ohms. So our Thevenin circuit looks like this. And in steady state, it becomes clear that the voltage across the capacitor is just the 6.428 volts. So we'll write down our initial condition because we know it now. Now we can get the final value. For this, our switch is in position two. And that's what our circuit looks like. In this case, our Thevenin source has a zero volt source in it. You can see there's no power source in there. And it's fairly easy to see that our Thevenin is R2 in parallel with R3. So we would more simply draw our circuit like this. And we can see here that in steady state, uh, again, we just found the final condition here.
So we know how our voltage plot is going to look. 6.428 volts, and then at five time constants, we have an exponential decay down to zero, right? Because the final condition determines that value and an initial condition determines this value. Now we need to figure out what the time scale is. And uh, we have two R thevenins here. So there's an R thevenin one, and if you like, we'll call this R thevenin two. And so now we need to figure out which R thevenin is the one that determines this time constant. Take a moment, pause the video, think about it, and unpause when you have an answer. If you said that it's R thevenin two, you would be right. That's because in this region, the switch is in position two. So we want to use the circuit in that state, in that condition. And so R thevenin two is the one that is applicable. Using the numbers that I gave you, I get R thevenin two as a 2.250 kilo ohms. And then the capacitance, of course, is the 60 millifarads, I believe. Let's double check. Microfarads. And when you multiply those together, I get, so when you multiply that by five, we'll say this is about 0 0.675 seconds. So if we wanted to write an equation for this, we would say, start with a unit step. And then the final condition is zero volts, the initial condition, and then the decaying exponential. So just double checking it, put in zero for T and you get the 6.428 volts. Infinity for T, you get zero. And so this appears to do what we want it to do. So in summary, for this, uh, this problem, we had a Thevenin equivalent circuit. In this case, it was zero volts here, and it was 6.2, uh, 6.428, I should say. And in this case, it was 6.428. And so the two Thevenin circuits give us the initial condition, final condition. And since we're calculating the dynamics for this range, we use the uh, time constant and the capacitance. So that was the, what we needed to find that voltage.